The last 30 years have undoubtedly brought about massive historical changes. One of the most significant was the dissolution of the bloc of socialist countries, culminating with the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991. Since that time, capitalist ideologues have lorded over the presiding consensus of the irrelevance of Marxism. Chief among these bourgeois academics, Francis Fukuyama, boldly proclaimed the end of history. Liberal democracy was the pinnacle of human progress. The backward forces of reaction and international bourgeois power all agree that Marxism has failed while blaming communists at every turn. They claim communism no longer reflects modern social values, especially since it contradicts liberal moralism. Most of all, they stress that Marxism has no place in modern times. In this video, we'll examine their claims for the irrelevance of Marxism and whether they can hold up to real scrutiny. One of the main arguments for the irrelevance of Marxism is that liberal democracy is the optimal political and economic arrangement in history. Therefore, socialism is unnecessary. For example, in his work, The End of History and The Last Man, Francis Fukuyama considered many of the arguments made by Marxists to be unsound. He states, all truly liberal societies are in principle dedicated to the elimination of conventional sources of inequality. In addition, the dynamism of capitalist economies tends to break down many conventional and cultural barriers to equality through its continually changing demand for labor. A century of Marxist thought has accustomed us to think of capitalist societies as highly inegalitarian, but the truth is that they are far more egalitarian in their social effects than the agricultural societies they replaced. Capitalism is a dynamic force which constantly attacks purely conventional social relationships, replacing inherited privilege with new stratifications based on skill and education. During these last 30 years, the capitalist organization of economy has experienced its characteristically destructive economic, social, and political cycles, widening economic inequality between the bourgeois capitalist ruling class and the working populations of the world. The wealth, welfare, and political influence of those who possess vast amounts of capital have increased exponentially, while that of the middle and lower strata of society has decreased. Since the 1980s, the world has seen a meteoric rise in the influence of corporate monopolies upon public policies, international relations, and society itself. The world's 2,750 billionaires now have more wealth than half the global population. The wealth gap between rich and poor is most comparable with the corrupt gilded age of a century before, further discrediting the notion that capitalist democracy is trending towards equality. The governments of nations throughout the world, despite boasting of great freedoms and democratic rights, have become the servants of the capitalists and therefore neglect the starving ruin of millions. Capitalist money funds influence, if not outright control, of the candidates, parties, and public policies of government, particularly in the United States. State monopoly in capitalist society is merely a means of increasing and guaranteeing the income of millionaires. These are the words written by Lenin in his work, Imperialism, the highest stage of capitalism, over a century ago. Lenin, through the analytical means of Marxism, wrote, as long as capitalism remains what it is, surplus capital will be utilized not for the purpose of raising the standard of living of the masses in a given country, for this would mean a decline in profits for the capitalists. The majority of Americans now agree that large political contributions prevent Congress from acting in the interests of the citizens in such critical and urgent issues as overhauling healthcare, global climate change, housing, and the full funding of necessary social programs. Unlike bourgeois theory, Marxism is a scientific theory based on materialism 
which does not view capitalism as an eternal system. Capitalism, like its feudal and slave-owning predecessors, is just another class society founded upon the exploitation of man by man. Furthermore, well before the conglomeration of various sectors of production and finance, Marxist theory declared the ascension of the capitalist oligarchs who, by means of financial manipulation, would extract immense profits from the labor of the workers and from the national treasuries of governments, gaining effective control over world economies. For example, in 2020, lobbying spending, that is, the amount of money used to influence policymakers to act in favor of corporate interests, reached $3.53 billion. Among the top spenders were the National Association of Realtors, the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, Amazon, Facebook, and Blue Cross Blue Shield. Not far behind are US weapons manufacturing giants such as Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. Additionally, although the influence powerhouses that line Washington's K Street are just a few miles from the US Capitol building, the most direct path between the two doesn't necessarily involve public transportation. Instead, it's through a door, a revolving door, that shuffles former federal employees into jobs as lobbyists, consultants, and strategists, just as the door pulls former hired guns into government careers. So far as it concerns the freedom, representation, and political power of the democratic majority, we can see that it is imperialist capitalism, not Marxism, which subverts the political influence and agency of the proletariat by seizing for itself control of the government for its own financial interests. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels stated in the Communist Manifesto that the bourgeoisie has at last conquered for itself in the modern representative state, exclusive political sway. The 20th century has marked a historic turning point from the domination of industrial capital to the domination of finance capital. A dominance that has now subsumed nearly every function of democracy under its unaccountable control. The world is steering full speed into an environmental cataclysm which we can all now see has been directly caused by capitalism's disregard for the consequences of its overexploitation of the planet's resources. How can it be said that capitalism has brought the world into a better age? Bourgeois apologists and historical revisionists perpetuate claims that life within the USSR and other socialist countries was oppressive and totalitarian without any semblance of democracy. These lies distort the view of the broad range of social benefits, freedoms, and democracy within the socialist nations. These narratives are brought about to deflect attention away from the current ruling class of the world and the state of repression employed against workers to preserve their uneven political, economic, and social control. How do we interpret these times of chaos and upheaval? How did we get here and where are we headed? Under the veneer presented as unity, freedom for all, and the final epoch of human and social development, lies the rotten structure of capitalism. Understanding the formation of exploitative societies such as capitalism is necessary for accurately identifying and decoding the social, economic, and political dynamics that are presently at play. The timeless proposition of Marxism as summarized by Friedrich Engels, is thus, that in every historical epoch, the prevailing mode of economic production and exchange, and the social organization necessarily following from it, form the basis upon which it is built up, and from that which alone can be explained, the political and intellectual history of that epoch, that consequently, the whole history of mankind since the dissolution of primitive tribal society holding land in common ownership has been a history of class struggles, contests between exploiting and exploited, ruling and oppressed classes. That the history of these class struggles forms a series of evolutions in which, nowadays, a stage has been reached where the exploited and oppressed class 
the proletariat, cannot attain its emancipation from the sway of the exploiting and ruling class, the bourgeoisie, without, at the same time, and once and for all, emancipating society at large from all exploitation, oppression, class distinction, and class struggles. The key to the correct understanding of the capitalist-dominated world and the journey to human emancipation is found in Marxism. Marx exposes the parasitic reality of capitalism and its antisocial nature. In the preface to Capital, Marx writes that it is ultimately the aim of this work to lay bare the economic law of motion of modern society, i.e. capitalist, bourgeois society. Marx's analysis of the development of capitalism led to the observation that capitalism subverts all previous social and economic orders, leading to shameless, direct, brutal exploitation in the name of free trade. Throughout the world today, millions are subjected to capitalist exploitation and social reorganization in every way. Through Marx's examination, a clear, accurate view emerges of the social, economic, and political conditions of the world. For instance, by observing the material conditions of the relationship between capitalism and humanity, we understand that capitalism seeks to bring the whole of global humanity under its dominion and create a world after its own image. Throughout the development of capitalism, at every stage of its development, Marx's theoretical and historical analysis has been proven correct. This view has become possible thanks to the philosophical and scientific cornerstone of Marxism, developed by Marx and Engels and commonly termed dialectical materialism. Dialectical materialism asserts that all matter and phenomena is integrally connected and in constant motion. Furthermore, these phenomena often act in contradiction to other forces in which they are connected. Therefore, when considering subjects such as history, economics, politics, social phenomena, etc., they should be considered not only from the standpoint of their interconnection and interdependence, but also from the standpoint of their movement, their change, their development, their coming into and going out of being. In its proper meeting, Lenin says, dialectics is the study of the contradiction within the very essence of things. Through dialectical materialism, we are capable of a rational understanding of the rise and collapse of empires and socioeconomic structures throughout history, as well as determining the interplay, struggle, and procession of present economic, social, material, and political conditions. Dialectical materialism is the clearest and most rational way to comprehend the nature of things, their interplay, contradictions, antagonisms, an eventual change from one form into another. While it is true that certain characteristics of social relations change according to the material conditions that influence them, the basis of our world, the capitalist economy, has remained the same. There remain those who extract profits from those who produce commodities and services without participating in that production themselves. There remains a bourgeois class which stands over those who perform society's labor. While capitalism has changed as it attempts to mitigate its own contradictions and crises, including wars of imperialist aggression and the perversion of political systems, its essence remains unchanged. It retains all those characteristics and dynamics that Marx, Engels, and Lenin observed and explained in their works. Attempts to make Marxism appear irrelevant and erase the view of class distinctions, even in the 21st century, is a concerted effort to weaken and dissolve the class struggle against the capitalists. History has demonstrated that the only successful means to change the situation and establish a better, more just and equitable world is through the application of Marxism-Leninism by the revolutionary proletariat where the principal theories of this liberating social order have been practically applied, societies experience rising literacy, technological advances, substantial increases in lifespan, full employment, and the enjoyment of basic human rights, such as accessible free medical care and housing, 
All of this is brought about by the political agency of the working class. The transition to a new social formation is not an easy task. This is a difficult struggle of the working people, who are the only people capable of establishing the necessary changes to the existing order. While the task of struggle in building new formations of social and productive relations is difficult and not without sacrifices, the cost is much less than what has already been paid by the working class while under the subjugation and exploitation of capitalism. Fundamental to the liberation of the working class is unbreakable ideological, strategic, and tactical organization and solidarity in step with the development and work of sound Marxist-Leninist theory and practice under the advocacy and assistance of an ideologically disciplined communist party. Marxism-Leninism, as history clearly presents, forges ahead in its power to reveal to us the future of a better world. Despite the wishes of bourgeois theorists, Marxism has been, and continues to be, relevant. Stay tuned.